In studio with Shane Heimberger from uh, Workforce West Virginia. Shane, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob and Admiral. Thank you very much for having me in here this morning. Um, we got our big thing coming up here, and we're looking forward to talking about it this morning. And uh, I appreciate you guys having me in. All right, now let's get to the, the meat right now of the matter, and that is that you're a Browns fan, and you are psyched, <laughs> pumped, and sky high this morning. Wow, it's, it was an exciting game yesterday. A lot went uh, both ways. It was a lot of penalties in the game. It was pretty exciting, but you know what? The Browns won, and that's what matters to me on that end of things. You know, you're, you're down to, what, your number three running back, uh, number three quarterback. That was a heck of a job to beat yeah. San Francisco. Ex absolutely. Probably the best team in the NFL. Right. And then the, the Eagles lost to the Jets. I'm not sure what was going on with Hertz throwing that interception when they had that uh, the lead and the, the clock on their side. That was a huge mistake. That was that was big, too. I saw the end of that. So three, no undefeated teams left. Three interceptions yeah. by uh, the by. That's NFL, you just never know, week to week, man. Any given Sunday. You think you do, but you don't. Hey, uh, we do know uh, how uh, you can go about getting a job here in the Eastern Panhandle with Shane and his crew there. Shane, first and foremost, explain the mission of Workforce, what you guys do, and how you help. Well, more specifically, I work for the Career One Stop, which is a division of the Region 7 Workforce Development Board. Mm -hmm. Slightly different. Workforce, uh, per se, is the unemployment office and so forth like that. What we do is specialize in helping people get on-the-job uh, training positions, a transitional worker, uh, you know, um, dislocated worker programs and so forth like that uh as part of that what we do is we put on a job fair twice a year and uh we're going to be uh doing one of those this thursday october the 19th at the berkeley rec center which of course is at 273 woodbury avenue here right here in martinsburg west virginia um i'm just gonna i'm rolling i'm, I'm rolling right Amen. uh we're expecting 100 uh, vendors of various employers of all different sizes and shapes and um, probably the biggest turnout of job seekers in over three years because of the, the changes in the uh, in the laws and the uh, benefits that people can get. So it'll be a big day out here on Thursday. So anybody who's inclined, we'd love for you to join us. This is traditionally a time of the year when people are taking on seasonal help as well as uh, looking for full-time help. Is there a pretty good mix of both? Oh, there's a there's a quite a mix. Uh, for example, Macy's, uh, Charlie Keller, a longtime friend of mine, going the whole way back to high school, him and his brother, they're going to be on hand. Macy's obviously one of the bigger distributors, probably the biggest distributor in this area, mm -hmm. quite possibly. They're going to be on hand. Uh, Orgel is supposed to join us. Um, Hollywood Casino, Department of Corrections, from both West Virginia and Maryland are, are supposed to be on hand as well. That's a pretty, they're looking for help. I mean, everyone's looking for help. And there's a lot of variety here, concrete and plastic makers and restaurateurs and so forth. So if you're looking for something, pretty good chance that we have it out here this Thursday. How about schools? Well, I mean, um, we're not really. I'm thinking specifically the bus drivers. Uh, you know, I've spoken to folks from both Jefferson and Berkeley County. I'm supposed to have representatives from the Board of Education of both uh, bus drivers. That is, that is a hopefully that's kind of like a division of what they're going to be talking mm -hmm. about. Like, but primarily, they're looking for teachers. Everyone, yeah. every school needs needs teachers. I, I don't know what we're going to do in another thirty years if we don't get more educational. Mm. You know. Yeah, more educational hell. I'm sorry, hit the microphone. More educational Punch hell. it whenever you want, Jan. I, I know that wrestling part of you wants to come out. So. No, we'll, we'll stay calm this morning. <laughs> hey, uh, minimum wage in the state is $8.75 an hour. Is anybody actually paying eight seventy five an hour anymore? Um, nobody that I've come across. But uh, one of the problems that we sometimes, even when you're, if you're a dollar and a half or two dollars above minimum wage, that's still not, realistically, it's not very livable. In, in the current climate, the way mm -hmm. things are right now, and you're, we're all spending 5 and $6 for a head of you know lettuce and stuff at this point. And everything's expensive. And so people are looking at this going, well, I can't really work for this. Uh, unfortunately, you're, you, there's going to have to be some, mm -hmm. you know, have to make some changes for you know, your living <laughs> arrangements, you know, or else, you know, you're not going to make it at all. But most of these employers, I'm, I'm seeing... 13 14 15 in some cases 18 to 20 dollars an hour especially in the daycares the daycares are really looking for people too you know they have small children they're paying a lot of them you know 18 20 dollars an hour for people with qualification you mentioned uh, macy's is procter and gamble still looking to hire people they're one of the unfortunately there are some companies that we've come across here recently they 
when you speak to them, they want to handle their own thing. It's like they don't understand that I'm not really handling your, you know, your employment uh, procedures. I'm just giving you a forum to try to speak to more people. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we just do our own thing here, and we just kind of like to stay self-contained. And that, I guess that's their right. I think they're missing out. Mm -hmm. I think they're really missing out on a great opportunity to, to meet all kinds of different people. Not only that, it's, it's networking amongst, you know, fellow employers. What are sure. you running into? What are you seeing? What are the hurdles that you're, you know, having a hard time crossing? You're finding good employees, getting people who are reliable, getting people there on time. We have new companies that are moving into the Eastern Panhandle. Are, are they at the point where they're attending these type of job fairs, or is it still too soon for people like CMC Metals and such? It's been a little. It's been a little early for some of that because I mean they're still really in the construction stages, and they're you know you got to you got to have like a I guess a front office infrastructure, mm -hmm. some of the human resources department, that type of thing to really be able to reach out and say, hey, this is here, this is what I am, this is what we do. Um, so a little early for those, but we're. Uh, we're always ready. Whenever they're ready to call us, we're ready to talk to them. Now, how how necessary are these in-person job fairs, Shane, in 2023, when many of the jobs people apply for, they just tell them to go ahead and apply online, not necessarily where you're filling out an application and turning it into somebody physically? Geez, what a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I'm here to load them up. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I think they're very necessary, and I think a lot of the reason for that is because – I think since, especially since COVID, we have lost that ability to interact personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody can, we can sit behind a keyboard and so forth and put in all this information. And Rob Mario has been here in the radio business for 40 years and it looks great, but you might, it looks great on paper, but sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't add up. It doesn't connect. It's like, it's it like me looking at the kicker's face and knowing he <laughs> yeah. wasn't going to make a pressure kick. Exactly, as we talked about before we went on the air. I think they're very important. I think it's very important to be able to stand in front of people uh, who may be employing you and be able to present yourself well, just be able to dress well, just be able to speak well. Everything isn't always on paper. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's in the intangibles. How did you carry yourself? Did you, you know, butts up looking want to work you know that you need, again there's certain formality i think we've lost and that interconnection that we've lost since covid of people just being able to get into a room and shake hands and say hey so tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me why you're interested in this mm -hmm. job or this position and you being able to do that i think these are very important for that aspect shane the 600 pound gorilla in a lot of these interviews is the or drugs as an individual on drugs, as a user of drugs, I know in times past, Macy said they've have, they've had difficult time recruiting a drug free employee. I think everyone's having a hard time. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, the the widespread drug problem. Of course, that's out of my pay <laughs> my pay grade, but um, it, it obviously is a problem, and that. And those type of issues lead to things like reliability and dependability and appearance and and so on and so forth. So I mean, they they kind of they they kind of go together a lot of times, and uh, it, it's difficult. It's definitely difficult. Which kind of ushers in another demographic, the retired community. Do you see a lot of retired folks coming into the job fairs? Uh, yeah, actually, some they they do like to see. I think the that generation, that generation. I don't mean to sound like, but. They like to stay busy. They want to stay involved. They want to be around people. They want to be able to help. They want to be able to help themselves. I mean, good golly, I don't know that I I certainly wouldn't be able to make it on what the government's paying out on Social Security and so forth right now. And I don't think that there should really be necessarily a limit on how much they can work as much as there is. But that's that's probably more of a political point than anything else. But, yeah, I see, I see actually more people – I'd say 50 and up than I do a lot of people in the mid-20s to mid-30s. Has there been an increase in that, that uh, older generation? Uh, and as, as far as, as attendees? As far as attendees in the um, last five, ten years? Uh, I would say uh, the last couple, the last two job fairs that I've been involved with, I saw an uptick in it for sure. I mean, I can't go back the whole way five, ten years because I don't have the data in front of me and mm -hmm. I wasn't in the position at the time. 
Now, what follow-up information do you gather? How do you gauge the success of a job fair? Well, we want them, everyone to walk through the door. We want them to enroll in our JAX system and our kiosk right inside the door. And that is, helps us track people as far as their names and addresses and what counties. We cover eight counties. So we want to be able to know who came through the door and what information that they may be seeking in addition to that because sometimes in part of my responsibilities I speak to people about the, I have the kiosk out at various different locations and I will make the announcement that take a few minutes if you have the time to enroll yourself in this kiosk it's separate from what you you came here to see and do but you may qualify for some additional uh, benefits you're already here take a few minutes you know, boom, boom, boom takes about you know, literally a few minutes or two and see if, how we can help you. We might be able to help you get a new career. We might be able to help you get trained for a new career. We have a lot of things going on at our office. Uh, my, my boss is a professional resume specialist. You know, he has an entire presentation that he does about how to dress, how to talk, how to behave, what to expect and what they expect out of you. It's definitely worth the time. Definitely worth it. That was one of my, my next question is if you were advising someone, especially a young person, uh, as they come in for uh, to the uh, job fair, what would you suggest they do? What would I tell you? Suggest to a young person? Yes. Be on your best. Do your absolute best. Dress what? as well as you can. Mm -hmm. Speak as professionally or politely as you can. Uh, a lot of employers are not – not much interested in listening to slang and you know i wouldn't dress your best behave your best make your best impression and do what you want to do to get the job that you want to have and of course i mean if you want to be a banker i mean i i, I couldn't show up wearing a def leopard t-shirt a torn up pair of jeans it's you got to have a certain amount of expectation um for what you want to do. I mean, if you're just okay with doing manual labor and being in a ditch, well, I mean, that's a little bit better. You probably wouldn't wear a, wear a tie and a vest for that. So, you know, be prepared. Do you have a sense that a lot of the folks, again, let's talk about the younger generation, have some idea of what they want to do, or they're just going to go in and throw a dart at the uh, proverbial dartboard? I think one of the problems that I've seen with younger people is that they will – they will jump from one spot to the next for 25 cents more an hour instead of trying to look at the long-term benefits of a position. There be there's certain jobs that you will train for and so forth that you know you may be underpaid in the beginning, but you're getting a real education, and by the time the education's done, you're really going to be making a good living, like a welding. Uh, that's a, that's a good example of a when you're an apprentice, you're not going to make a lot, but when you're the master here, you, you pretty much print your own money. So that's you know how closely do you work uh you mentioned a well as perfect example work with some of the uh uh vocational institutions james rums in some degree uh blue ridge we work directly with yeah. with both and we also work with eastern uh technical college out of moorfield as well which is another good school that you know, provides that type of vocational training and there's a lot of different vocational training in a lot of different places so there we can help you get pretty much any type of or get the training started for pretty much any position that's that's i really truly feel strongly about our office at, at career one stop because we can help so we have helped so many people and can help so many people in so many different ways is your funding primarily through the state or do you have grant dollars as it's, well it's, it's grants it, it's it trickles down from the yeah. you know, from the federal government down through mm -hmm. and it's you know Sometimes they tighten their belts a little bit, and they make things a little bit more difficult than they, they they probably should be. But people, there's always a hurdle that you have to jump through to be able to get the right kind of help. Workforce West Virginia's Region 7 Workforce Development Board is hosting an autumn job fair this Thursday at 273 Woodbury Avenue, Martinsburg at the Rec Center. That's from 11 a.m. until 3, with many of the area's top employers, on-site interviews, professional resume specialists available, too, and you're uh, welcome to attend. Shane, do they have to reserve a spot to uh, um, attend this, or can they just walk Oh, no, in? no. At attendees are fine. Employers, I, uh, I strongly urge them that we still have a few tables available. I'd like for them to call me if they uh, need a spot. And if you're listening, it's the, the number here is... Uh, I just always want to make sure I say it right, 
264-6133. Contact us and we'll reserve a spot for you. And if you need a ride, by the way, uh, the Eastern Panhandle Transit Authority are provided bus passes at our office, so you can give us a call on that. So if you don't have a car and you want to come out and check things out, we can help you do that too. Excellent. Do the vendors have to uh, or do the uh, employers have to uh, pay for the table? Oh, no, there's Everything no charge. For, no, absolutely okay. no. There, there's no charge for, for that. No, uh, tables and vending is all completely on, on us. How are you able to fund this work uh, for this uh, job fair? How am I able to fund it? I'm not. <laughs> Out of your own pocket, how are you able to afford this? Well, let me see here. i got a dime and a quarter. Uh, well, they would, again, that money is all just uh, money that's provided you know, from the federal and then passed on from the state and then into our program. So, Do most of the uh, people looking for help require a driver's license? Uh, I would say it's, it's recommended, but I don't think it's required I mean, unless they specifically tell an applicant, yes, you got to have a driver's license. And are people looking for full-time and part-time help? Full-time, part-time, seasonal, across the board. And uh, how many of these folks uh, could expect to uh, be a regular full-time employee out of a job fair like I this? think it's a pretty good pretty good odds. I, I encourage the uh, the vendors to bring uh, their, uh, their applications and somebody who in that department who can hire. So if you find a guy you want, I mean, you can take him. It's up to you. Sit there and work out your deal. Mm -hmm. I encourage that with every employer that I speak to. It's like, hey, you know, bring your stuff and be ready to hire somebody if you like them. If not, you know, you throw the fish back in the water and, you know. Go from there. You got it. Are, is this uh, for the people looking to hire people? Is this mostly a first impression, call you back later for interested in your event? Or I, would, I mean, I guess it can be. I mean, I, that's again, that's all personally on them. Mm -hmm. I love that's there, – there's different, different – um, perspectives i guess from every every employer who comes into what they're looking for and so forth like that but not an automatic yes or no either way and how many different um, prospective employers are you looking to I'm, I'm i'm looking to fill at this time we're trying to we're trying to hit 100 and we're real close now i got a, like i said i got a few tables left but not many mm -hmm. so if you're a, a business in the area a prospective employer Give me a shout here real quick, uh, 304-264-6133, and I could probably hold your spot for uh, this Thursday. And lunch is provided for the vendors, so Sweet. You know, if that's important to you. Do you have any military recruiters on here? I do. I do have I've, every branch except for the Air Force will be represented uh, this Thursday. Uh, Air Force didn't seem like they... They didn't have the time this time. I think there was a scheduling conflict or something along those lines. I'm not trying to degrade. I'm just, sure. I think they weren't available this time, but I think everybody else is accounted for. What kind of feedback do you usually get from these? I know this is not the first one of these you've done. No, I mean, from I both think, sides, people looking for a job and people looking for employees. Well, I think that it, it, it can, it, I, I've heard in different cases that the smaller the event, the better the employee E prospects were and the bigger I've heard it both ways it's like a, we had fewer employers but we had a stronger pool of uh, jobs uh, prospects mm -hmm. and then there was ones that were a little bit bigger that didn't have as many good job prospects so it's we're trying to hit it right down the middle this time the perfect mix for both sides actually that's what I'm going for every time I want to be able to have the right kind of employers and plenty of them available and plenty of job seekers for those employers to speak to you have very many mom and pop uh, businesses represented the problem right now, I think, with the mom and pops are they they need the help, but they don't have the ability to shut down the operation to send anybody over to interview. So it's kind of that, that that's the to me that's the worst. That's worse than having the big business who's handling their own thing. It's the smaller businesses who need the help but cannot take the time to go through a couple people because they got to shut down their operations. Like I can't close down for four hours to come and talk to a handful of people and I, you, I can understand that mm -hmm. you can't you know close everything down too many times before you're not closed down for good are most of these uh, folks looking for entry-level people or are there some uh, management positions available there's there? some there's some management positions but I think more of it is, is kind of where you the entry level mm -hmm. I would say that the numbers favor that more but I mean there are businesses looking for People who with real resumes with the bigger educations already coming in, going, hey, I've just been out of work for a while, or I had four kids and I've been I've been a stay at home parent, and now my kids are all in school and now I'm ready to get myself back into the field, and yeah, it's a good opportunity like that as well to speak to some people. Last year, I heard a stat that for every job available, uh, there was uh, two. I think I got this backward. For every two jobs available, there was only one unemployed person in the country. So it's very difficult 
to fill all the positions that were open out there. Do you know if those numbers have tipped at all? Um, I can't really speak to that, Rob. I wish I was not quite as informed as you are on that one. I, I don't. <laughs> in, 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 in your defense, you don't have a job where you sit there and listen to the national news all day. So well, it's well, I mean, part I, I, of my gig. It wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't be terrible. But, no, I, yeah, yeah it, it sounds right, and I don't know that it's changed so much. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have enough unemployed people in the eastern panhandle to fill the jobs that are currently unfilled? Is there enough unemployed people to fill all the jobs that need filled? Probably not. Do you work with Rescue Mission closely? I work with a lot of other uh, nonprofits. They're, they also take part in these uh, events as well, and I, and I value them. Um, yeah, there's different charities and different um, church organizations and so forth, people who are trying to you know, gather things for the for the poor, the needy, or the downtrodden, and so forth. So they're they're a, big, they're a big part of these events as well. You didn't have a follow up on that, Bill. I do not. Yeah, know. I know Tim Garino does great work yeah. with uh, folks who are having a difficult time uh, getting them uh, back into the the. Uh, workforce and i think bill was kind of maybe pointing toward that if you i, I was yeah mission. and i was kind of ex extended that to the uh, uh some of the drug rehab play, uh, yeah. uh facilities in the county uh are these the the individuals the, that populate the uh the rescue mission and the drug rehab are they the type of people that will appear at the job fair or do you have to reach out to them independently no they they I, mean, I think everyone kind of comes on their own accord. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying. Obviously, we're, we're trying to help those folks as well. That's, that's a big part yeah. of what we do as well. We're trying to help anybody who's trying to, to better themselves. We're, no matter what the past is, we want to be able to try to help them get in the right direction. So I think the point you're making, excuse me, Rob, very quickly, that you're not that the job fair is just not a one event for you. You do this. It's, it, we're all day, kind of tied every in year, yeah. every day, every yeah. every way. Two hundred two Viking Way. If there's a way we can help you, we're gonna.